Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. It's Sensitive Deku and I'm back with another video. I really enjoy doing these types of videos a lot because I have a lot of opinions and it feels good to finally put them out there. Some pretense, Danganronpa V3 is my favorite out of the main series games. I believe it has the best cast, the best motives, and although the ending at first pissed me off, over the years I've really come to appreciate it because that ending was something we've never had in Danganronpa before, like nowhere close. And the mastermind this time wasn't Junko, which was good. Anyways, as much as I love this game, there are a couple things that I wish they would have done differently, and one of those things is keeping Kaede as the protagonist. I'll be briefly analyzing her as a character, explaining why she was a great protagonist, comparing her to the previous main characters in main games, and giving my piece on why Kaede could have functioned as an amazing protagonist and how she could have ended that dumb killing game. Needless to say, there will be spoilers in this video. I mean, the title is basically a spoiler in and of itself, so whoops. If you haven't played or seen gameplay of V3 yet, I highly suggest you go and do that before watching this video. And I also suggest you like this video and subscribe so that we can start growing our family and I can do more videos like this. Also, one quick thing before I begin. Kaede happens to be one of my best friend's favorite characters, and it's because of her that I even got into V3 in the first place. So, Rella, this video is for you, and I hope you enjoy it. So, let's start by talking about Kaede herself. Being one of the most popular characters in the entire series, it's not hard to see why she's so well-liked, both by the fandom and by the characters in the game. Kaede Akamatsu is portrayed to be an optimistic sweetheart who works hard and is able to motivate and inspire those around her. It may seem like she has a lot of similarities with Makoto, but we'll get into that later. We don't get much about Kaede's backstory, even in the bonus modes, but in the very beginning of the game, she describes that she's been playing the piano ever since she was a child, and she would get so wrapped up in playing that she would forget to eat and sleep. This, of course, supports the fact that Kaede is a really hard worker, but it also goes hand in hand with one of her biggest flaws, her tenacity. Throughout her time in V3, Kaede shows that her unwillingness to give up while being an admirable trait can make her come across as selfish and actually turn some of her classmates against her for a short period of time. This can easily be seen when Kaede and the others attempt the death road of despair for the first time. And although the others comment on how it seems impossible to escape, Kaede refuses to let herself and the others give up. These traits, along with her being one of the only protagonists to be proactive in a situation like this, ends up leading to her downfall. When a time limit motive is introduced, Kaede finds herself back against the wall. With the time limit in place, all of her efforts to stop the killing game from starting by keeping a group united was meaningless. Kaede is the type of person to bear the weight of responsibility all on her own, so I'm sure this was especially hard for her. What else could she do to save everyone when she's racing against the clock? It's here that we begin to see another layer of Kaede's personality get revealed, her distrust for others. Although she spends so much of her time in the game preaching about believing in others and being friends, Kaede couldn't even do that herself. Her unwillingness to trust Shuichi's plan led her to formulate one of her own, and that plan involved killing the mastermind. Some people try and cite this as a character flaw, but honestly, it really just makes her character all the more relatable. Let's not forget, these are 16 strangers trapped together with the ultimate goal of killing each other. As much as you want to trust and believe in others, doing so in a situation like this could prove to lead to your death. So while I won't say her being distrustful is a character flaw, her hastiness in placing other people's lives over her own definitely is. Shuichi even says this himself, if Kaede had been less selfless, she wouldn't have had to resort to planning a murder. The last thing that I like to touch on is that for someone so focused on revealing and finding the truth, Kaede lies all the time. This adds some complexity to her character as well as goes hand in hand with the game's theme, Truth and Lies. She lied to Shuichi and the player, or rather, hid the truth, about her planning a murder. She always lied about feeling sad or down when in the presence of others. She lied in the trial about the receiver. Hell, she even lies in her very first line in the game, where she states that she's the protagonist of this crazy story. The reason I decided to start this video off with a brief analysis is because many people try and say that Kaede is nothing more than a Mary Sue or waifu bait, and honestly, that's just not the case. Kaede has many character flaws, and the fact that you can spend so long even talking about her when she didn't even make it past chapter 1 should show that. She's extremely interesting and definitely isn't one dimensional at all, and out of all the main characters, she's the most relatable one out of the bunch. Now that we've talked a bit about Kaede's character, I'll move right into how she compares to the other main characters before her. So Kaede receives many comparisons to Makoto, but in truth, they're two very different people. In the first game, Makoto doesn't have much going for him as far as personality goes, 
More or less, this was intended so that the person playing the game can self-insert themselves in Makoto's shoes, and this is very typical of visual novels, but this is why, while the other characters are very eccentric and act like the ultimates they are, Makoto was written to come across as normal and as average as possible. On the other hand, Miss Akamatsu came with a ton of personality, and on top of that, she even had her own talent. Besides being optimistic, Kaede doesn't have much in common with Makoto. While she definitely seems much more normal compared to her cast, Kaede is full of quirks herself. Things like making out of place piano references, to slapping Shuichi upside the head to get his attention, to even pulling up Sumugi's whole skirt in order to get her to talk. She even flirts with the girls out of the cast on more than one occasion, calling Sumugi sexy and complimenting Tenko multiple times, mostly saying that she's cute. Having a main character like this was a breath of fresh air, both for me and many many players. She was just so different, so fresh, and yet so so likable. Another great thing about Kaede was her free time events with the other characters. She only gets two for each of her classmates, which is unfortunate. But Kaede is extremely charismatic, so she's able to form bonds despite her short time in the game. I do like Hajime and believe he was a really good protagonist as well, but for the most part, Kaede definitely has better free time events for sure. For starters, Hajime is much more pessimistic and, for lack of a better word, rude than Kaede is. And this makes some of his free time events come across as rather one-sided, as the other character will be doing most of the talking while Hajime basically just stands there. Kaede on the other hand actually manages to make her free time events feel like an actual conversation between two people. Her approachable personality makes it so that even the more withdrawn members of the cast, such as Ryoma and Maki, open up to her a little and even express interest in being friends with her even outside of the killing game. And even if we disregard her FTEs, Kaede is much better at forming relationships than Makoto or Hajime. My receipt? Take the first trial in V3. After Kaede is exposed as the false blacken, no one believes it and multiple people immediately start rushing to her defense. Even after the trial, Kaito, Gonta, Tenko, and Shuichi even offered to protect Kaede from her execution, all because they cared about her. Now let's compare this to DR1's fifth trial, where everyone decides to vote for Makoto as the blacken despite him having five chapters of solving murders, getting them through trials, and befriending some of these people. Do you see what I mean? Makoto and Hajime just didn't have the same effect on other people like Kaede did. It took the both of them multiple chapters to finally grow out of the whole insecure boy who has no confidence, phase into strong characters who have the gift of reaching people. Meanwhile, Kaede was able to do this in only one chapter. Also, I guess I should mention Shuichi here because, to be honest, I like Shuichi more than Makoto and Hajime, and while at first I was salty and bitter at the fact that he was the new protagonist and not Kaede, I genuinely do believe that Shuichi was a great protagonist and just a character in general. And he's so fucking cute. Do I prefer Kaede over him though? Well, yeah. Like I said before, Shuichi was a very well written character and I enjoyed him a lot, but he just lacked Kaede's outspokenness and vibrancy. When you combine that with the fact that he was appointed the role as Kaito's sidekick while Kaede was seen as the leader, this just makes his character seem much more toned down in comparison. And I'm not saying that this is a bad thing either, I'm just making it a point to say that Kaede came across as the bigger personality in the game. Now, I see a lot of people say that Kaede simply wouldn't work as a full-time protagonist and they usually give two main reasons as to why. So let's talk about them. The first one that I see all the time is that Kaede couldn't be the main protagonist because her character had nowhere to develop. This relates back to the Mary Sue thing I brought up earlier, but people love to say that Kaede was already perfect and so her character couldn't go anywhere past chapter 1. This of course is not true. There are many paths in which a character can develop and Kaede could have had a lot of variety in choosing where her character could grow. A popular suggestion is a deconstruction arc, and I really like this idea for the simple fact that it's realistic. Basically, Kaede would continue through the killing game, disregarding her murder attempt, trying to keep everyone united and keeping her role as leader of the group. Chapters 1 and 2 would see her acting like the positive and optimistic girl we already know, and her motivational speeches would still get most of the group to cooperate. However, as more of her friends die and the trials keep happening, Kaede would definitely feel responsible being seen as the group's leader. And by chapter 3, she'd begin to inwardly question whether working together and believing in each other is really an effective way to stop the killing game. At this point, Kaede would battle with her views of idealism versus realism, and by the end of the killing game, these experiences would see her grow into a stronger and wiser character overall. 
While I really like this idea for her character, I personally believe there was an even better way to utilize her as a protagonist, and believe it or not, this idea actually came from a fan fiction. I honestly forgot the name of it because I read it so long ago. I'll probably look around for it and either put the link to it in the description box or just tell you guys below in the comments. But basically, Kaede goes ahead with her murder plan, but instead of her being executed, Shuichi takes the fall for her inner place, even though she begs him not to. Kaede then continues through the killing game, at first trying to stay upbeat and positive, but still carrying the weight of her sins and guilt in secret. I won't give away the whole story obviously, but having Kaede battle with those inner demons by thinking that she killed not only Rentaro, but also Shuichi as well, was really really interesting to see her kind of overcome, as well as her dynamic with the other characters. It was honestly extremely well written, so I will definitely try and find that for you guys if anyone's interested. But these two scenarios clearly show that Kaede could have developed in a multitude of ways, and saying that she would have remained static throughout the whole game is really a discredit to her character. Kaede acted like a real person with real feelings, she would have definitely changed over the course of the game. Finally, a lot of people say that Kaede wouldn't have rejected Hope like Shuichi did, but I 100% disagree. First of all, Chapter 1 Kaede definitely would not reject Hope, just like Chapter 1 Shuichi would not reject Hope. Shuichi's experiences throughout the killing game is what allowed him to grow into such a strong character that could make that decision. So why is it so outlandish to assume that Kaede would do the same? Especially when her classmates keep betraying each other and her wish by continuing the killing, I just can't imagine that Kaede would blindly follow Hope in that circumstance. Not to mention, above all else, she was determined to uncover the truth. It was the driving force behind her not accepting the first blood perk and literally walking to her death. I would have loved to see an alternate ending where we would have got to see Kaede reject hope and despair the same way Shuichi did and how everything she and her friends had been through throughout the course of the killing game would have influenced her to come to that decision. But anyways, I'm gonna end the video here, I think I've talked long enough, so I hope you guys enjoy listening to this. I'm still new to making these types of videos, but I work really hard on them and I appreciate anyone who takes the time to watch. I definitely plan on doing more Danganronpa videos in the future, as well as discussion videos in general. So if you're interested in that, don't forget to subscribe or just check out my channel from time to time because I do try and upload every week. So yeah, I just want to say again, thank you so much to whoever watched this video. And if you liked it, please leave a like and let me know down in the comments, do you think that Kaede could have worked as a full-term protagonist or do you think she played her chapter one role? But I guess I'll see you guys next week with a new video, so... Bye. And if you ain't down for us, mm. This is me. My name is Kaede Akamatsu. I just remembered who I am. Nice to meet me. I'm the protagonist of this crazy story. 